Tide pools are found at the point between the land and the sea and are formed when the tide retreats. In order to survive, both animals and plants need to outcompete other organisms and adapt to an environment with limited space and food. Along with constantly changing temperatures, salinity levels, and currents. These are the organisms found at the Cabrillo Beach tide pools, and this is how they survive. Barnacles are a type of arthropods in the class Maxillopoda. Barnacles are sessile suspension feeders. Their diet is based on plankton and algae. They live on any hard surface, commonly on rocks and tide pools, but they are also found on large marine animals. Here are some different types of barnacles. These are red thatched barnacles, which have a similar shape to acorn barnacles. All barnacles have a hard exoskeleton, a shell, and multiple segmented legs. These legs have become specialized for feeding and no longer function as limbs for movement. When exposed to water, the legs bring food to the opening at the top of the barnacle. During this time, water is trapped in the shell, so the animal can use oxygen in the trapped water for respiration. Gooseneck barnacles have many calcareous plates that protect the body and internal organs. As they grow, they make new plates. When they expand, they also have to compete for living space. Barnacles live on rocks, but can be also found on whales and other organisms when there is limited real estate. These gooseneck barnacles are living on the shell of a sea turtle. Barnacles and other organisms have a commensalistic relationship because they are filter feeders. The relationship is only parasitic when heavy infestations cause drag and reduce its host's swimming efficiency. This is the spiny chitin, the most common chitin in the tide pools. The chitins are from the phylum mollusca in the class Polyplacophora. Like all mollusks, chitins have a shell on the top of the animal with a fleshy foot on the bottom. This shell is made up of eight calcium carbonate plates. Chitons use their foot to move along rocks and feed on different types of algae, like red and brown algae. Chitons can range in size, from 2 cm to 33 cm. The largest species is the red gumboot chitin. For protection, chitons have evolved to survive on rocks that aren't submerged, which is beneficial during low tides. They also cling tightly to rocks, especially during strong currents. Chitons are hard to spot and easily blend in with the rocks which is a good way to avoid predators like seagulls, sea stars, and lobsters. However, chitons do not have a self-defense mechanism. Instead, they hide under sea urchins and sea anemones to escape the same predators. This is a commensalistic relationship. Kelp are from the phylum Ocrophyta in the class Phyophysae. They are a type of brown algae. Because they are plants, kelp photosynthesize their own food. They also form forests and shallow waters, which provide food and housing for many species, including sea stars and sea urchins. This is a feather boa kelp. It is one of the larger brown kelp species found in the intertidal zone. Feather boa kelp are generally found in low tide zones because they cannot tolerate long exposure to the air, but they have adapted well to the waves in the intertidal region. The feather boa kelp are both strong and flexible enough to withstand the intense currents. Nodoacmea incessa is a limpet only found on the feather boa kelp. When it grazes, it causes scar or pits on the kelp, which can kill the plant. This is a parasitic relationship. Another common species found in tide pools is the snail. From the phylum mollusca in the class Gastropoda, many snails live in the intertidal region, but there are snails that live near hydrothermal vents. There are two types of snails predators, and herbivores. The predatory snails move around the tide pool to look for mussels and barnacles to eat. This is the Kellett's whelk, a predatory snail. You can tell it's a predator by the cone-shaped shell. They're one of the largest sea snails found in Southern California and usually live in kelp forest or rocky reefs. Kellett's whelks are rarely found in tide pools. They eat either dead organisms on the seafloor or hunt for black turban snails. Their predators are sea stars, octopus, or sea otters. This is the black turban snail, one of the most common snails found at tide pools. The lower part of the shell is black and the top is an off-white color. They feed on algae. 
Snails have many adaptations to protect from the tides. The shell protects from the waves and from drying out the animal when exposed to air. They also hunt when the tide is high and hide when the tide is lower to decrease the chances of drying out. When approached by predators like sea stars or larger snails, the snail retreats into their shell. However, due to increased CO2 in Earth's atmosphere, snails are finding it difficult to defend against predators. Jellison et al. published a paper to the Proceedings of the Royal Society in June of 2016, found that acidification of the ocean slowed down the black turban snail's response time and made them more susceptible to predators. Not only is the black turban snail population decreasing, but so are many other snails, like the sea butterfly, whose shell is dissolving due to the increasing acidity. Since black turban snails graze on algae, this could lead to an increase in algae in the community and disrupt the whole food web. Sea hares are from the phylum mollusca in the gastropoda class. This is the California brown sea hare. Juvenile sea hares often eat red algae, while adults eat eelgrass and green and brown algae. This is because of the habitat they live in. Adults like to live in tide pools, but juveniles live in deeper waters. In order to survive in tide pools, the California brown sea hare can adapt to losing 30% of its body weight if it dries out. When threatened by predators, sea hares release a dark purple fluid in defense, similar to an octopus. Unfortunately, this ink alone cannot defend against predators. Researcher Yanovsky from Stanford University in 2012 determined that ocean acidification not only decreases the speed of sea hare movement, but also prevents juveniles from developing into healthy adults. This would create a large disturbance in the coral reef system. From the phylum Cnidaria in the Anthozoa class, sea anemones are sessile and predatory animals. There are three types of anemones. Aggregating anemones are much smaller and live in tightly packed colonies. Giant green anemones are found in deeper waters. Solitary anemones live in the intertidal zone and do not aggregate. This is an image of a solitary anemone. Anemones use their tentacles to catch prey. They will feed on any animal that comes close to their tentacles, like small fish, snails, and crabs. The tentacles are covered in nematocytes, which shoot out a venomous thread and hook onto the prey. Sea anemones are often found in pools and cracks for constant moisture. They can tolerate short periods of exposure to air, but usually close up during low tide to prevent from drying out. The anemone's most important adaptation is its mutualistic relationship with the algae growing inside the anemone. The algae makes energy through photosynthesis and produces oxygen for the sea anemone in return for protection and nutrients. Clownfish have a mutualistic relationship with the anemone. The clownfish rub gently against the tentacles to coat themselves in the venom. This tricks the anemone into providing a home for the clownfish. For protection, the clownfish ward off any other fish that tries to eat the anemone. Sea anemones use their nematocysts to fight off predators. Sea urchins are from the phylum Echinodermata in the class Echinoidea. They are herbivores and eat algae, kelp, and seagrass. The sea urchins in tide pools feed by waiting for algae to get caught in their spines, and then use its tube feet to bring the food to its mouth. This is the purple sea urchin, the most common urchin in tide pools. They prefer to be submerged, but can be caught in the waves and exposed to air as the tide retreats. When they are exposed, sea urchins move back underwater using their tubed feet and sharp spines. Sea urchins can also relocate through its mutualistic relationship with carrier crabs. These crabs grab the urchin and prop it onto its back for defense against predators. The crabs then take the urchin to better feeding grounds. This is the shell of a sea urchin. It is a hard outer shell used to protect the sea urchin from predators. Their spine is attached to the shell. This is its main defense. Their predators are the sea otter and the sea star. Sea otters and sea stars keep the urchin population in check, which prevents the overgrazing of kelp and keeps the whole ecosystem going. However, sea urchins are currently destroying kelp forests. In the areas where sea urchins have eaten all their resources, research from Louis et al. in 1990 have shown that the calcite deposits that form the urchins' jaws and teeth increase when the animals are stressed by hunger. 
This is a rat bed adaptation that allows them to eat inedible material. In addition, a study from Dory et al. in 2013 found that juvenile urchins exposed to higher levels of carbon dioxide are rapidly adapting to withstand ocean acidification. Both of these adaptations, along with the lack of predation, are leading to a catastrophic increase in sea urchin population and a dramatic decrease in the diversity of its ecosystem. Crabs are from the phylum Arthropoda in the class Malacostraca. They are omnivores, often eating algae or other sea animals. They are very good scavengers and even eat dead animals. The shell of a crab is very important. It shelters the animal from predators, protects from high temperature ranges, and carries water to prevent the crab from drying out. This is why they can survive in the high tide zone. Hermit crabs are known to be the garbage collectors of the intertidal zone. They are an important food source for fish, including pile perch. When approached by predators, they hide in their shell. Hermit crabs have a mutualistic relationship with sea anemones. At a young age, the crab picks up a sea anemone and puts it on its shell. The anemone protects the crab from predators, and the crab gives its leftover food to the anemone. The striped shore crab is another common tide pool crab with similar characteristics to the hermit crab. They are very good at detecting predators and scurry away at any sign of movement. This is why this crab is hiding under the rocks. Its common defense against predators is its pincher and hard shell. Plants and animals in tide pools have unique adaptations to survive and flourish in the intertidal zone. Unfortunately, increasing levels of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere are causing ocean acidification. But, by protecting our oceans and our atmosphere, there is still hope for these organisms to continue thriving in their ecosystem. To learn more about our oceans and our future, visit www.oceanconservancy.org.